Anything else? Do we want to seal any portion of this or change any of the wording? Um, under which paragraph? Under Miss Moran moved to accept the appointment of OTPT mm -hmm. and seconded by. So the discussion. Yeah, the discussion. The discussion portion. should either be redacted or. It's a bit too much. I mean, we can make a motion to table this till non-public yeah, if you want. Yeah, that's a good All right. idea. So I'll make a motion to table non-public oh, session. Wait, just hold up. I just have one more correction. Sure. The second paragraph um, there, my it's name an needs a. an A on the end. Yes. And I would request that the pages be numbered on these. It's a lot easier. The um, last on page one, <coughs> the. Uh, paragraph towards the end that talks about the appointments of volunteer coaches. Uh, Robert Bauer's name is spelled incorrectly. It's B A U E R. <coughs> we have a motion by Ms. McElhaney to table these. Second. second by Mr. Frieder. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> uh, non public session two from April 16th. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Morin. Second by Mr. Frieder. Discussion? Again, do you want to table these until non-public just to discuss what should be in here and what shouldn't? Well, whether or not we have to seal because of what is in here. Right. Second. Second by, so a uh, motion by Mrs. McElhenney, second by Mrs. Moore, and all those in favor? Aye. <coughs> non-public session three from April 16th. And I'll make the same motion to table till non-public. Second. Motion by Ms. McElhenney to table, second by Ms. Uh, Mrs. Moran uh, because of content. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. <coughs> okay, for reports, we, uh, we, we're going to have the uh, building principals present uh, some information on, on behavior data. Uh, Mrs. Moran had, had asked uh, for it to be on the agenda and um, we had a conversation uh, late last week that she would probably may not be here. Um, so I had um, Mrs. Vaughn call off the building principles. Before you get too far ahead, yeah. there, there is a non-public session from April 23rd in there, in those minutes. Do we need to approve those or do we do that? Already? Actually, it's not on the agenda, but it is in the packet. April 23rd? Mm -hmm. that, does that, it's in there because we need to approve it. Did we Correct. that before? We've not done that. Oh. Good, yeah, that's the top one. Your call, but just pointing oh, it out. Oh, it's right here. Um, okay, so let's go back to them then. A motion to Motion by? Approve. Mrs. Morin to approve. Second. Second by Ms. Michael. Any discussion on these? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. I'm going to abstain. Mr. Frieder abstains. It wasn't here. Okay, thank you. Um, so be the behavior data discussion um, is asked to be moved to the next agenda. I apologize. Oh, I that's okay. Let you know I, just that I was coming. <clears throat> and that way, hopefully, we're all here anyway. So let's go to policy. So, a lot of them. <laughs> there is a large packet. Um, yeah. Last week we had, or last time that we met, we talked about um, the graduation policies and those pieces that were around the changes that needed to be made with the now the change in the scheduling. And there were two or three policies that were embedded in those that were brought forward, and we said, okay, we'll bring those next time. And then as I got to those policies, there's policies embedded in those and policies embedded in those. And so this group, with one exception, are all intertwined. So that and all but I believe two are required by law. So 
that's why you're getting them as a group um, and it was tough to tease those out otherwise <coughs> um, for the most part these are all um, boilerplate and necessary so um, in more or less alphabetical order by the alphabet soup that the school boards association gives them um, IHBAA evaluation requirements for children with specific learning disabilities this updates what we have as our number four two five five um, there there were changes made shortening the language and cleaning it up in September of 16 with um, respect to legislative shifts that had been made and so it essentially narrows it down I've left the NHSBA note there for the board's information that will be taken off the policy when it's published so it's just that paragraph okay. can I motion to accept these as a group the final aid? Sure, you can. Motion by Mrs. Moran to accept all policies on the agenda as a group for final reads. Except Second. for except for policy four ten. That's uh, that that's, that's later in right. a, another discussion. That's not okay. part of this. Okay. All right. Okay. Second by Mr. Frieda. Um, I'm not sure I just followed what you just said about this particular policy. Okay. This policy. And how come, could, because if I remember correctly, the legislation was extending the amount of days right. that school districts have after a request for testing. This policy is referenced in the policy that says if you do um, an alternative plan for students, you need to make sure that you follow anything that's required here. Okay. And so that's why it's here as okay. we need to update ours because that's referenced here and the letters don't match and therefore, okay. so it's following that trail from this one mentions, this one mentions, this one that's in three of those and back over. So that's why. We have this in place. This tightens up the language and simply says, follow the rules folks pretty much so. any questions on IHBAA no okay. um, does anybody have any discussion on any particular policies um, I did not. no I, I would just inform the board members that are not on the committee we did extensive discussions and, and okay research to look at all those cross references and even though there's a lot here we thought it was necessary as Ruth Ellen said to, hmm. to get them all in place right away so that we were covered. Um, Great can I ask about the early graduation policy? How, is, yes uh, we have that in place this is because it's we didn't have it as IKFA we had it as the number that we have right and so this puts the coding that is referenced in the other policy that matches that again it's it's updating the coding to match the school boards association coding alphabet soup the policy didn't change it doesn't really change what's in there as far as content the other when you say the other policy okay so for instance Extended learning opportunities references IMBC, ILBA, ILBA, mm -hmm. and so those three tie into this one. It also references IKF, IHBI. So that's why all of these are tied back into because there's references tied to. Does okay. So is there somewhere else? in regards to early graduation that talks about the student meeting with the board <coughs> we can certainly add that that's something that that I know that this board has talked about we can add that to this policy yes well that's currently what we do would that be well, considered policy or procedure though well it's it's been procedure yeah you know I I personally like it I think it's important to rather than just ship them out the door, I think it's important to, 
to, uh, and no, I'm not necessarily looking for the board to have the final say on it. I mean, if the high school principal recommends it and the superintendent collectively agrees, I just think it's, I think it's important for the school board to acknowledge the effort that mm -hmm. it took mm -hmm. to do that, um, to find out maybe what their future plans are. Mm -hmm. um, it's happened quite frequently in the last few years. Yeah. In, and I would um, just hate to have them go without us right. having some type of um, acknowledgement and meeting, brief meeting with them. So um, before final approval is granted, um, an informal meeting with the school board? Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? Okay. I'm fine with it. Thank you. So that will be as amended. Yeah. Anything else on policy? Um, I would like to mention under IMBD high school credit for grade uh, seven eighth grade coursework that is required by law that's not something that we have had in place in the past so that will be a change moving forward um, and what that does is as long as the coursework that has been completed by the seventh and eighth grader meets all of the co same competency requirements that the high school coursework would meet, that credit would be granted. But it must be identical requirements. If, the, if there's a performance task at the high school level, this, the middle schooler must perform the same, same or like task to meet that competency. So, so. would they be getting the competency for the, the work at the eighth? seventh and eighth grade level and it, at the high school it would appear on the high school transcript they would get it, it wouldn't they would get down. high school well the credit for graduation they could start earning graduation credits as seventh and eighth graders if they're doing like work so but it would be in addition to their already course load at the middle school or are you saying so if, if they if already have finished a, algebra and they they opt for algebra two or or if I have a student who takes an equivalent algebra class and meets the high school algebra competencies, then algebra one can appear on that high school transcript as having been taken in eighth grade, with the math credit there. But remember that graduation requirements say that students have to have a math intensive all four years. They have to have an English class all four years. So it's not that. They get to opt out, but they get it recognized that they've done this and are moving forward. So they still need an additional four credits in math if they math was where they're right. And interestingly enough, a seventh or eighth grader has to have approval from the high school principal. Yes. yes. Well, I'm glad to see that that's, I like that piece of it. <coughs> okay. Any further discussion on policy? So a question, why is the work comp temp policy that, in that, these? That one is the one that has nothing to do with the student right, cases. Right. This is the one that's separate. That's separate. So yes. what so the vote the motion right now is only for the student the cases. The first nine, perhaps. Right. Okay. I was just making sure. Yes. I we couldn't we, figure out how it tied in. Or it doesn't. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Okay, so we have a motion to accept all these as a final read. Um and I would just note, first, um, yeah, first time. I would note that uh, IFKA as amended. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. New business. Um, uh, are we going to do GB? Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> GBD, uh, GBGD is Workers' Compensation Temporary Alternative Work Program. Um, this is essentially establishing a light duty policy if we have someone who's coming back um, from an injury and enabling them to ease back in and having a purpose, a policy and a procedure in place for that. Um, we attached in your packet was a policy that was written for us in 2005. Um, we also, I've, I've attached um, Exeter's current policy that's almost verbatim. So, I mean, it's it's still current, it's still um, applicable, but it uh, is something that we need to have in place that's going to guide where we're going. We have had to 
use this as procedure, I would like to have it set as policy. Motion to accept as a final read. Second. Motion by Mrs. Warren to accept as a final read. Second by Mr. Frieda. Further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Thank you. And this policy is in here for later on. Yes, it is. Okay. That uh, was for reference. New business, the award of a fitness equipment bid. So during the, um, actually prior to our starting with the budget process, last year we were um, discussing uh, replacing the fitness equipment at the high school. Um, this ties in with um, PE curriculum, health, um, for sports. Um, so I worked uh, in conjunction with Mr. Mutcher and Ms. Peabody to uh, generate a bid. Um, we were quite fortunate that we, um, let me see, let me pull this up. We actually received bids from five companies. One company did um, submit two bids, which is perfectly acceptable that as long as both pieces of equipment, you know, both bids met with our commercial grade um, uh, equipment specifications. Um, so I kind of want to turn it over to Mrs. Peabody if she would like to speak to um, the request to award to uh, Precision Equipment. I'm just trying to find my worksheet here. Um, precision Equipment basically was in the, the middle of the uh, bid price. Um, and let's see. Their piece of equipment was for uh, for five for four pieces of equipment with installation and shipping was eight thousand seven hundred thirty four dollars. Um, low bidder um, was Total uh, Fitness out of um, Brattleboro, Vermont. They were at seven thousand seven hundred twenty one dollars. Um, Precision, uh, let's see, Cronk Fitness, um, Gronks was at eight thousand one hundred sixty dollars. Precision did provide um, a second bid, uh, which was 9,332. Uh, Pro Maxima out of Houston, Texas was $10,714. And lastly, Matrix Fit Fitness out of Cottage Grove, Wisconsin was $12,291. Um, would you like to speak further to, to right? Um, only because she has so much more experience with yeah. trying to pick the appropriate. I'm sure I have a, a, a much more experience just rather than just using but I know equipment. That, right. but, um, I know that you first, I want to thank Dr. Sure. Moore for moving this forward. I know these were discussions last year, so I appreciate you moving that forward. Um, a lot of discussion with Tim Mutcher, to be honest with you, and he was the factor for me in um, deciding, in my mind, for precision fitness. He has a relationship with the person that we would be working with, um, because he works at Merrimack Valley as a coach, and they use Precision um, Fitness, so he's already worked with this person. They go into the school and they work with the coaches and the kids on how to use the equipment, how to care for the equipment, which is a piece I really liked as well. And if there's anything wrong, they're relatively local, where they can come right here and he can, you know, evaluate what's going on and Did check things out and fix it right away for us. Did the other companies not offer training? Not that I know of. But like I said, I Mr. Mutcher knew this guy and worked with him on this, and he has a very good relationship with the, with the gentleman, and, and it was very satisfied with what he's done at Merrimack Valley with him. Why two different bids? Is that odd? Um, no, it's, it's basically because they do have uh, quite an offering of, of types of equipment. Oh, okay. um, so I this believe, represents right. Two different. I think one of the grades. pieces, you know, the equipment they go by how how much it's used as well, and one of, one of the pieces was, you know, it was great, a little bit more pricey, but it, it wouldn't get the, you know, the usage would be for a little bit more. I mean, we could do that, but he he was being honest. He's like, in in speaking, Tim spoke with him and said, uh, this one's fine. I know that I can get more money out of you for this one, but to be honest with you. For what you do in Farmington, this one would be satisfactory for you. So I, li I liked that honesty as well. And these pieces will fit in oh. our fitness room. Dr. Moore, I'm sure, is, was part of that discussion. <laughs> well, <laughs> when she it's fairly really small. <laughs> yes, yeah. If um, not, I'll put the treadmill in my room. <laughs> <laughs> 
But they did. They provided, we put it into um, the Google Drive. They did provide um, a layout of where to go and actually where they okay. would suggest putting the equipment because, yeah. yes, we did talk about that. Yeah. They, they knew the space we had to work with. Mr. Frieda. Did we ask for training in the RFP? Um, that's what I'm just double checking was um, for the review. And that may not be the case. Well, I just know he's worked with the gentleman in right. that area. That I'm, just, so I'm just cautious about rewarding people for doing things behind the RFP that's not asked no, for. I, I understand that, sure. Uh, so if we want training, we should really ask for it. Yeah. So we did, we said grand total price of all the equipment, the delivery, assembly, and installation. Um, and for me, it was just like the personal relationship he already has with him that he's comfortable with. Any other questions? Other than that, are the pieces equivalent? Are what they different? Mr. Mutra said different yes. Pieces? I mean, a leg press is, is pretty much a leg press. I mean, it's just more of um, a commercial grade, and these are commercial grade. Right. Football team going to use this stuff? I don't care. They use it now. Working hard during the off season. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion on the? I guess for me, for to go forward with with a pricier one, I'd like. Do we have some guarantees of training? I mean, if well, as, you, as Mr. Frieda said, it, that wasn't part of that. I mean, right. this was a little extra bonus for me. That's why I right. was going with that. Um, is it that a guarantee? I, he does it for Merrimack Valley, so right, I can't imagine works. that it wouldn't he works be. He there, though, right? Tim does, but this gentleman doesn't. Oh, this gentleman's right. company works okay. with Merrimack Valley, and right. Tim, yeah. right. that's what that was. Sorry. So that's the how they know each other from this equipment being in Merrimack Valley and Tim working with him. He trained Tim in the equipment and things like that. Okay, perfect. I'll make the motion to accept uh, to award the bid to Precision Fitness for their uh, would you say first proposal? The eight thousand seven hundred and thirty four dollar bid. Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any other discussion? You're good on the call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One opposed. Okay. We have a request for a memorial on one of our ball fields. Gentlemen, I'm going to, if you want to step to the microphone, that way the cameras can pick you up. Um, Make sure you state your name, guys, just for the record, okay? All right. I'm Paul Roy. Uh, I'm Ed Infernal. And Paul, you're a junior here at the high school? Yes. We're and I'm a junior, too. You're a junior as well. Okay. So, uh, and they do have this in their packets, yeah. if that right, helps. Good. Okay. I'm just going to ask about that. Um, so, as you're all probably well aware, um, we did lose our good friend Chandler Peterson this past year due to a car accident. Can you speak into um, the mic? Thank you. Okay. You can push it up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that way down. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it's falling down. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. So, we have been talking as a team and would like to put a mural down on the retaining wall on the field just below the driveway. Um, I've talked extensively with Dr. Moore and Ms. Peabody about this at the high school. Um, we have an artist to do the mural right now, but unfortunately she could not make the meeting tonight as she was up in Gilmington doing the junior fire department practice up there. So she could not be with us tonight. But um, Maddie Rayte, a, she lives in Milton, comes here to Farmington. Um, she's a four-year art student here at the high school. Um, she offered to help us do the mural up on the wall. Um, the topic of concern, I guess, from the high school was the permission to do so. Um, so, so tell me, this picture that we're looking at, is this, um, <clears throat> 
Is this this is what it will look like? This is the design. Yes, that would be the picture that we would use of him. Mm -hmm. um, Evan put that up on the wall so that you could get a scale of how big we would like it to be against him. Yeah. So you have a student standing next to yeah, it yeah. for scale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Maddie, Maddie said that she can do this directly on the stone or over it. It doesn't matter as far as the paint or how much it'll come off due to weather. It'll be protected from the elements. Okay. What I don't know is with the surface of the stone, mm -hmm. if it might be better to have a flat surface that's superimposed on it rather than to try to yeah. Yeah. work with the crevices of the stones. Is, is there going to be any that? language on it or just a picture? Um, we were thinking of putting his name on there. Um, um, yeah, maybe a quote, once a tiger, always a tiger. Yeah. It's in the works. Yeah. We, um, there's a couple different ideas bouncing around, but definitely his name and the picture of him up on the wall. Maybe they miss one. Um, I was going to motion to accept um, the concept, but a final drawing come back to us when you have it. All right. Motion by Mrs. Moran to accept the concept Second. of the mural, seconded by Mr. Frieda. Further discussion? Um, I just have a question. Have you contacted um, the parents to get any feedback from them? Um, I've not spoken to April since his week. I know that we had been talking about it then, but it was very soon to try to hmm. reach out to talk to her. It's um, a good idea. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, I think Mrs. McElhinney makes a, a great point that it's, it's quite appropriate now. Yeah. You know, and I understand it was... It's probably still soon, but in, for her, I'm sure she's still dealing with it every day. But um, I think it's appropriate at this point to say, look, this is what we're thinking about doing. We've got initial school board approval. Do we have your permission? You know, it is an image of her son, so we want to get her on board. I can't imagine she'd say no. I think she'd be probably quite honored and moved. <coughs> uh, Dr. Moore, this has your recommendation? It, from, it does. Yes. And Mrs. Peabody, yours? Yeah, I'd like to actually add to this, maybe on a little sidebar on to this, if that's okay. Can you, yeah, yeah. just so people at home can hear. <coughs> I love the concept of this. Uh, just, just a little side thing as well, though I had a, another request today for some type of, um, one of our students passed, and I know we've had quite a few students that, sadly, have passed that have um, been athletes and people want to memorialize them in some shape, form, or fashion, or, you know, perhaps um, retire their jersey. I think we might want to come up with something very specific on how we do that process mm -hmm. um, moving forward, you know, whether, you know, bricks. just for example, bricks or something like that, because I just think we need a very more f a formal Good point. process. Yeah, um, a lot of times decisions are made very emotionally, and, you know, having been, um, an athletic director who's had to do this, um, retiring the number is probably not always the smartest thing to do because you have limited numbers you can I, use I for jerseys. Agree. I just, and, and, I, and, not, and, and as time goes on and new uniforms get ordered, all of a sudden it's like, oh shoot, we just ordered a number that we retired and you don't want to offend anybody. So <clears throat> the honoring of a jersey, not necessarily attached to a number, is one idea. Correct. Bricks, memorial bricks are another idea. And, and maybe we can get a student group to, to talk about something like that and, yeah. and you know, present some ideas. Yeah. Just some maybe thoughts. the athletic just committee, just can, something the athletic committee could talk right. about. Right. Um, I don't think, in my recent memory, that we've lost an active member of a team. And we've lost right. athletes who just graduated, mm -hmm. um, but we've never lost an active member of a team. And this is unique and uh, quite, quite a gesture. And I think it's uh, a nice thought. These students have worked hard. Yeah. They have. So very, um, I'm very pleased and proud. You know, we, we want to, because it's a, a permanent thing and it's a, a, a memorialization of somebody, we definitely want to get a solid plan. Mm -hmm. We need to know what it will say and all that. I know you're still tossing around some things, so that's why Mrs. Morin's motion is, to move forward with the concept, but to come forward to us when it's 
basically about to come to become a reality. Okay. Any further discussion? The other thing yep. that I would um, recommend as you finalize your plan is that, you know, let's say this is painted over the summer. It'll look great for the football season. What's it going to look like four years from now when it's been out in the weather all winter? And so how do we, how do we put in there a type of perpetual care for the mural to make sure that it doesn't become kind of the, the colored blob that nobody can recognize in 10 years. So kind of what does that look like and how do we protect it? Yeah, there's, um, there's probably plenty of things we can do, mm -hmm. especially if we um, you know, put like it on another surface, like maybe like a thing of wood over it. Like we don't have to have like the paint just bear out, you know, kind of like to you know the face of the elements. We can put maybe like some plastic stuff over it, you know, something see through, you know, that can protect it from the elements and keep it preserved. I know that Maddie's also mentioned using an acrylic coating over it, mm -hmm. so that the paint itself is not actually what you're seeing. You're seeing the acrylic, so that would be able. To yeah, all yeah. all good things for you guys to discuss as you move forward with this project. Yeah. But it's a great idea, and Absolutely. we appreciate you guys doing it. Any further yeah, discussion? Just, Mr. just look into those acrylics because they also have a time limitation. You have to reapply, so right. get that schedule so we know when we have to paint it again. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Nice job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. <coughs> All right. Acceptance. Oh. Any other new business from the board? Okay. Old business. Acceptance of donation for lunch balances. Oh. How much I thought we did that. Well, for discussion. We motion to accept the donation for discussion. Second by Ms. McElhenney. Motion was by Mrs. Moore. We talked about it. Yep. Um, I brought it forward and then went back. And frankly, you know, I was thinking that when we had done it, we talked about a thousand dollars being the threshold. The policy, actually, the threshold is five hundred, and so you do have to formally do a motion to accept. So we want to go ahead and make sure that because that's the donation was from an anonymous donor for what amount? Nine hundred. Nine hundred dollars to yes. help with um, delinquent mm -hmm. accounts. Lunch accounts. Lunch yes. accounts. And so the other piece to that is we wanted to look at some guidance around where that might be applied. And we have some ideas, but we wanted to make sure that that was in accordance with board's wishes as well. I think I've got a little balance that needs to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom is a lunch. Day. You didn't carry a balance. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Any other discussion? We'll accept that. What's the actual amount? 900 even? 900 even. even. Okay. Uh, motion to accept the 900 donation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so, okay, so we have, I don't know if you want to discuss totals now or if this is something that you'd rather discuss in non public as we look at where that might be applied. So, in non public, I would say. I would, I would say non public. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Okay. Any other old business from the board? Any other, other? Um, were there any acknowledgments that we wanted to make? I have a couple of questions too. Okay. I'm trying to think. Well, ask your questions um, first. Though. I'm think. The retirees. I had asked you a question about that. Right. You, we're going to bring it up here. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Um, is there something that the school board can do to honor our long-term retirees? I know there are some things in the works to, at the school level. But um, sometimes there's um, plaques or, or right. something from the school board. Um, certainly, since I've been here, there hasn't been a here's what we do. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to right. help set that precedent. We just need to make sure that if this is what we start, that it's something that right. we continue. <laughs> Right. So, um, and when you say long term, are you ser are you talking about a certain level of service? That's what I was thinking, I, I, or or different something for each level. I know we honor them at the beginning of the school mm -hmm. year, so we do service pens, but yeah. that's not necessarily upon retirement, and right. that's not that's not from the school board. So, if you're looking right. to have something on behalf of the board, um, 
that's something we can do. It's something that isn't currently budgeted, so we also need to talk about where that might come from. Right. But I just didn't want to see, you know, the school district doing plaques and the school board doing plaques because then they're just going to walk out with plaques. Plaques. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, maybe something, I don't know, meaningful. I don't know what it is. It's a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, okay. Is that something we can put our head together on? We can. And yes. See yeah. what we can come up with. Okay. Yeah. And idea. on the last agenda, you had the um, top ten dinner. Yes, I have menus for you. I need your meal choices this evening. So. <laughs> The important stuff. The yeah. important stuff, yes. <laughs> so one for each of you. Did I say it could go? Okay. When is it? I remembered what it was. When we went to the Lakes Region dinner, they, um, which you missed. I know. And she, However, and she texted me dessert. I know. And, like, and it was great. <laughs> Come on, you can carry me. I love that dinner. <laughs> you um, can carry me. They did recognize a lot of students and several great students from right here in Farmington, and I'd like us to do something as well, just to bring their names forward and have them receive a recognition from mm -hmm. uh, so. Usually, Chef, well, I forget his name, comes down and does acknowledgments at, at last chapel. Graduation. Yeah. Okay. I don't know oh, if he yeah, does. Yeah. He does and usually then, senior acknowledgments. And then we, um, Isabel is not a senior but she is the state HOSA mm -hmm. president. president. So that might be something that we would want Cheryl Kavitsky to come down and acknowledge at Last Chapel as well. Yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah. yeah. But she'd be available. But, I mean, do you want to see us invite them to the school board meeting? Whichever. I just know yeah. that it's kind of become a thing, and, and it's kind of been a really uh, a kind of a positive note for the school board, and I, I just like that. Yeah, I, um, having been sick for the last meeting, I missed an invite that I wanted to extend to the young lady who represented us in the spelling uh, competition uh, over yes. the team. Right. So I've got to do that. Okay. I want to do that before the school year ends. Um, and maybe we can do those students at the same time so I can okay. get, get, those, get with you on those. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Public participation. Oh. Huh. Quiet? Nothing exciting? Okay. 6 p.m. <laughs> Um, I can remember nights where people were pounding down the microphone trying to get up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, our next school board meeting will be June 4th. June 4th? Yes, June 4th. Uh, Monday, June 4th, right here at 6.30 p.m. Um, Thank you to those of you who came out this evening and those of you who are viewing from home. I will entertain a motion to go into non-public session one under RSA 91A colon 32 A, B, and C for resignations and nominations. Okay. So moved by Mrs. McElhenney, second by Mrs. Moore. And all those in favor by roll? Aye. Aye. Good night.